We're going to transition now um, just to a time of, of worship in the Word. And as we transition, um, as you get your Bibles, get settled. Um, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 1, um, verses 3 through 7. The title of my message, Sharing Suffering, Sharing Comfort. Um, and and while, you're, while we're transitioning, um, I'd like to take you back, way back, um, 20 years back, and um, even more than that, 23 years back, uh, to the summer of 1997, I, I think. So um, this memory is a little, it did happen, but I can't remember exactly what, what summer it was. But I'm get, I think it was summer of 97. I was 13, and uh, there was, um, there was a, a time in the summer when I went to church summer camp. I don't know if you can see me. There I am, right there. Yeah, let's, let's zoom in a little bit on that, that sweet, sweet baby face there. Um, if you could pull the hat away, you would see a nice bowl cut, too, parted down the middle um, that uh, I think you would all enjoy as well. Uh, but anyways, uh, back in the summer of 97, I was at church camp. Um, and I don't know if, if you've been to church camp before, you, you might have done a lot of team building activities. And this summer in particular, I remember, we did a lot of team building activities. We did everything you see here, and then we also had a couple where we, were, we had to all get on a platform together, there was a ton of us, and, um, or get a bucket full of water to the ground, um, only using our feet, um, while we were all kind of seated in a circle. Um, just a lot of a lot of those things and and they were hard and they were frustrating I don't know if you've ever done these team building things but sometimes if it's hot and you're tired from staying up late the night before uh, you can get frustrated and it is brutal sometimes um, well it was this particular summer or around here this summer um, that uh, I went to church camp, but then a few weeks later, I went to Boy Scout camp. And at Boy Scout camp, little did the, um, little did the leaders of Boy Scout camp know that I had just done all of these team building activities at church camp. And so they put us, they tried to put us through the ringer again, or put me through the ringer again, and Yet, I, we had kind of figured out strategies and stuff that worked for us, and so I was able to share those strategies um, with my team so that we could get done quicker. So it would ease the frustration, it, and, it, and we were able to get to the snack shack a little bit sooner. Um, and uh, so, as we're going to see in, in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7, just that there is purpose behind suffering. And there is um, a reason for, the, for what we do. And we are comforted in our afflictions, just as, as I was um, comforted in knowing kind of the solution to some of these problems that are, that are team building activities. I was comforted in knowing, I was able to comfort my next team as we struggled through these different activities. Um, so if you would, uh, turn in your Bibles, um, or phones to 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7 as we read together. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. So, um, the title of my message is, is Sharing Suffering, Sharing Comfort. And I think um, as, we, as we read that, there were you might have noticed just the the amount of times that Paul talks about sufferings and he talks about comfort and they're all in the context of sharing suffering and sharing comfort um, and so the fir my first point is just that uh, sharing sufferings that uh, Paul expects that we share in sufferings <clears throat> um, and with that expectation 
if we look at uh, verses 5 and um, if we look at verse 5 it says for as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too now I know this is this is um, a little cliche um, but if we look at Paul's wording and I think you know um, the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write this and uh, so not a single word is misplaced and so as we when Paul says for as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings it's not an if statement it's not a perhaps when statement it's an as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings so I think that's important to remember and I think it's a call for us to, to realize that um, that the uh, these these promises of suffering are not conditional that they are they are going to happen um, but the, we'll see later that there's a there is comfort too. So um, Paul was an expert in suffering, and so we can see um, just that in verse five, right? Our sufferings and afflictions connect us to our Savior. So this is the main main thrust of sharing sufferings is that we see in verse five, as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. That our sufferings and afflictions, as Paul mentions in this section, connect us to Christ. They connect us to our Savior. Paul, Paul was an expert in suffering. And he, if, if anyone had anything to say about how our sufferings um, display God's power and display um, the power of the gospel in our lives, it would be Paul. Because... Um, as he, he creates a list in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. And if you turn there, you can read with me um, some of these, some of the sufferings that Paul lists. Right? Starting with 1123b, he says, um, well, just starting in 23, excuse me. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, uh, and often near death. Five times I received at the hand of the Jews forty lashes less one, less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A day, a night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, and apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches." So Paul is well acquainted with suffering. And if, he, if, if he's going to talk to us about suffering for the name of Christ, I think we should pay attention. Um, and so as he was well acquainted with suffering, he also points us to one of the reasons behind our suffering is that we share in the sufferings of our Savior. And so... Um, He draws that connection between the sufferings for the name of Christ and the sufferings of Jesus. And Jesus, as our ultimate example, as our substitute, was well acquainted with suffering. As it says in Isaiah 53, 4, it says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. So, Christ's sufferings, and as Isaiah 53 continues to talk about, right, um, he carried our griefs, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. I think um, there is a distinction here between um, how Christ was acquainted with grief, how he lived a life on this earth, and as, in, as part of a fallen world, we are all acquainted with grief. And so, 
there's that sense. But then there's also the other sense where Christ bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. And I think that's a separate um, instance that we're talking about. When we talk about sharing with the sufferings of Jesus, we're not talking about sharing in that um, propitiatory work that Christ accomplished on the cross, um, as Isaiah 53 goes on to talk about. But we are talking about sharing with the sufferings of Jesus as part of this fallen world, as part of the consequences of sin. Um, not that he sinned, but that he dealt with um, in his lifetime. Um, and so he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we can share in, in that um, kind of in that work of Christ um, as a, like a commiseration. And there's comfort there. Um, and also, just through the sufferings of Christ, um, as Hebrews 2.9 says, it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. So there's an element of suffering where um, Christ was made perfect through suffering, as Hebrews 2 says, and also where as we share in that, we are also being perfected, um, that, as we'll see later. So in all of this, we are called to a life of suffering. Um, as we've seen, Paul says it's not an, a, not an if statement, it's an as you share abundantly in Christ's sufferings or as we share. Um, and also just um, that through, through suffering, we are acquainted and, and, and um, joined uh, to our Savior in a unique way. Um, and also, Paul, um, in Romans 8, also connects our suffering to, um, to our adoption. Uh, so if we turn, you don't have to turn there, I'm just going to read from Romans 8, 16 and 17. It says, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Now, Steve has been going through uh, 1 Peter just about suffer now, glory later, right? And this is a perfect example of that, right? Um, our confirmation of adoption is that we suffer with Christ in order that we may also be glorified with him. What a wonderful thought that is, that we are not alone in our suffering, that we suffer with Christ, that we suffer with him, and the, the promise is that we will be glorified with him if we suffer with him. What a great thought. And then also in 2 Corinthians, Paul not, doesn't just stay in that we suffer with Christ or that we share in Christ's sufferings. In verse 5, he talks about that if we are comforted, or excuse me, that we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings. Or sorry, so share abundantly in comfort too. Excuse me. Um, and so just there is a consolation that comes from knowing that we share in Christ's sufferings, but there's also more. There's a promised comfort. And that leads me to my next point, is that there's sharing of comfort. They're sharing comfort. And the, the point is that our connection to Christ comforts us and allows us to comfort others, as we see in verse 4 and verse 6. Now, before we move on, I think um, there is a benefit in talking about this definition of comfort, right? Our connection to Christ comforts us and allows us to comfort others. And if you look up in the definition, or in the dictionary, the definition of comfort. It talks about the easing or alleviation of a person's feelings of grief or distress. Now, I think that's, that's a good definition of, of this kind of comfort. But I think there's also a layer here um, because, it's, because Paul is talking about, in this, in this passage, Paul is talking about um, as we patiently endure the same sufferings. So, there's not an alleviation of grief or distress, or even maybe of, of the feelings of grief or distress. And so, as we look at the passage, we'll see that uh, according to the, the um, ESV study Bible, the definition for this kind of comfort is the overall disposition that comes from resting in God's sovereign and loving rule as manifested in Christ's lordship. 
So it's not only the alleviation of grief or distress, but there is a disposition, there is a, uh, a state of being that comes from resting in God's sovereign and loving rule as manifested in Christ's lordship. And so that's the kind of comfort we're talking about. And that is the promise that Paul lays out in, in um, verse 5 and 6. It says, For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. So our union in Christ affords us more than just salvation, right? We are, we are united with Christ in his sufferings and, and we suffer with him but we are also comforted abundantly as well. Um, in John 14, 6, 16, excuse me, John 14, 16 and 17, Christ is speaking of, of asking the Father to send the Holy Spirit, right? And I ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, uh, some other translations translate that word helper as counselor, advocate, um, and some even comforter. And so when we think about, like, uh, when we think about this promise, this promise of comfort is a promise of the Holy Spirit. And that what a wonderful promise that is just to have the, the knowledge that as we suffer, as we share in Christ's afflictions, that we will also be comforted, comforted by Christ and the Father who sends out the Holy Spirit um, into the hearts of those who believe and trust in Jesus. Um, and that is where our comfort comes from. That is um, a supernatural comfort. And so the that's our, that's our connection to Christ and how our connect, our union with Christ and the the Holy Spirit through the Holy Spirit comforts us but also as we see in verse verses 4 and verses 6 or verses 4 and 6 um, that that comfort allows us to comfort others so it's a, not only an inward comfort but it's an outward comfort um, and before we move into that I just um, something that's surprising to me in this passage um, is in verse 6. It says, If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Now that, now that if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation was really surprising to me. And um, just, as, just looking at that again, I think there's, there's two things that are going on there. One, Paul saying that if we are comforted, if we are afflicted, um, it is for the work of salvation in our lives. It is the process of sanctification in our lives as um, laid out in, as he talks about in 2 Thessalonians 1.11. He says, um, to this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. So God is working in our affliction for our good and for uh, to be worthy of the call to, to that we are saved, justified by grace through faith, and yet there is a process in which God um, allows affliction and, and um, in our lives that we in turn may grow in godliness and and holiness. Um, and then the second thing that I think is happening, as it says, um, if we are afflicted, is for your comfort and salvation. Right? I think as we comfort others. The, our affliction uh, uh, creates opportunities for us to share the gospel with others. Um, and Paul really demonstrates this um, in 2 Corinthians. Later in 2 Corinthians, like 2 Corinthians 3, um, where he talks about, and that's another part of the sanctification, he talks about we're being, trans we're being transformed into the same image of Christ from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. And so he's talking about this transformation in us um, 
that started in salvation and it just carries on as we are transformed in one, um, one form of one degree of glory to another. And he's talking about that light that's in us that shines out of the darkness later in, ver- in chapter 4, um, in verse 6, chapter 4, verse 6, right? Um, the, for God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So this light um, is shining out of us, whether that's, an infli- whether that's through uh, affliction or um, trial or... Um, prosperity, um, that is our disposition that we are to have, is that the light shines out of us. But the light shines in the darkness, right? And so Paul continues the metaphor in verse 7. It's a well-known passage. says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God. This treasure is the light that shine, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the fact that it's the good news of the gospel, the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is what we talked about in prayer meeting today, that we have an advocate on high who has gone into the Holy of Holies, our high priest who intercedes for us. The good news that we can stand before a holy God um, without fear of judgment, without fear of uh, being welcomed in, adopted as sons and daughters. And and that is, that is wonderful news, that Christ came, uh, lived the life that we should have lived, died the death that we deserved, and is now seated at the right hand, was, died and uh, was resurrected, and is now seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us. That good news that we carry around um, is inside of us, um, in jars of clay, us frail humans, um, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God, and not to us, right? So he's going to explain how, that, how we show that, that power. It says, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. And that leads me to my last point, is that our ultimate comfort Um, we come to Jesus in our brokenness and sin and plead for his mercy as he opens our eyes to the glories of the gospel. And there is comfort in our ultimate affliction. There is ultimate comfort in our ultimate affliction. And not only that, there is salvation. We We are rescued from our ultimate affliction by Christ. And that is a, a wonderful thought. Um, even as we think about that relief from our ultimate affliction, uh, we can we can rest in that we we can find comfort in that. So that is our ultimate comfort. Our ultimate comfort is that Christ rescues us from our ultimate affliction. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty, "Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest." Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now these words uh, of Jesus are talking about how we are uh, burdened, you could say afflicted with sin. And if we come to him and cast our burdens on him, um, then we can find ultimate comfort. We can find salvation from our ultimate affliction. Um, I want to take you back to that summer um, when all of the when when I um, was at the two camps. Um, now, two years before that summer, I had uh, given my life to Christ. I was uh, I publicly declared my faith and trust in Jesus, and yet um, there was there was a lot in my life that didn't match up with uh, the way I was living, or, the, or there was a lot in my life that didn't match up with what I had professed. And so that summer. I rededicated my life to Christ. Now, um, however your theology of that works out, um, I, uh, that's just how I was, that's what I was raised in. So um, there, uh, there was a time at that, in that summer camp where, where I was just broken. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then um, 
about three years later, <clears throat> excuse me, about three years later, I rededicated my life to Christ again. Um, and yet, um, about senior year in high school, summer after my senior year of high school, um, these words really opened, were opened up to me. Um, and I saw um, how what I said I believed and the way I lived didn't match up and how I was trying to carry the burden of a double life, of someone who says they're a Christian and yet lives a different way. How um, that burden had weighed me down and, and really caused a crisis in my life um, where when I read these words and saw that if I, <laughs> I was laboring and I was heavy laden, I could find rest. And um, I was living under the affliction of my own sinfulness. And yet God, <clears throat> in his grace and in his mercy, opened this passage to me and showed me that I needed to cast all of my burdens on him in order for my ultimate affliction to be lifted, in order to be rescued from my ultimate affliction. And so that is um, just a, it's a wonderful thought that we can be comforted, comforted in our ultimate affliction. Um, and not only that, but we are comforted in our ultimate affliction so that we can comfort those, we can comfort others with that same good news. Um, as it says in verse 4, 2 Corinthians verse 4, 1 verse 4, excuse me, it says, the God of all comfort who comforts us in our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So if we are comforted in our ultimate affliction, if you have experienced the comfort of being set free from your ultimate affliction, then you have the ability to share that with others. We are comforted so that we can share that comfort with others, um, as Paul says in verse 4. And if you have not experienced that comfort that comes from having your burdens lifted, from understanding that the ultimate affliction of your soul is sin, and that you can cast your burden on him and take his yoke upon you because it is easy and light, then I, I would pray that you would do that today. And I would also pray that as you go about, if you have received that comfort, that you think of ways in which that you are comforting others um, who have not experienced um, that ultimate comfort. And so in Matthew 28, Jesus says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So we share in Christ's sufferings. We are united with him through our suffering. And there is not only a commiseration, there is a promise of comfort. And that comfort comes as we share in his afflictions, as we patiently endure the sufferings, the same sufferings, that Paul has suffered for the name of Christ, that others have suffered throughout the ages in the name of Christ. And that is taking um, our ultimate comfort in knowing that our ultimate affliction has been, that we have been rescued from that, um, that we have been rescued from our ultimate affliction. And so I uh, would pray that you would go uh, forth in these things, in um, just these truths, and that uh, God would be with you. So if you would bow with me, in prayer as we end our time together. Um, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful truths of um, knowing that in our sufferings there is, um, there is comfort. As we share in Christ's sufferings, we also share in Christ's comfort, the promised comforter that you have sent into our hearts for those of us who believe and trust in Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would um, help us as we experience the ultimate comfort uh, from our ultimate affliction and go forward in uh, sharing that comfort with others. And so, Lord, we just uh, would pray these things in the name of Jesus, our comforter. Amen. <laughs>